how to develop your 10 sefirot or the tree of life you may have heard that term and here's the thing if you search for um, the 10 sefirot or tree of life on Amazon or Google or YouTube or what have you you're gonna find a lot of results you're gonna find all kinds of things and I would bet that um, about 99% of the results you'll find will fall into one uh, of two categories one kind of results is all sorts of misconceptions misrepresentations um, and sometimes just downright nonsense uh, because people sometimes borrow concepts from the wisdom of Kabbalah such as the ten sefirot or the tree of life and other things and then they conflate them and relate them to all sorts of earthly matters uh, or objects and that results in all kinds of materializations that frankly have nothing to do with the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah and, and with the true meaning of the ten sefirot. Now the other kind of results you may find is um, academics, people from this or that university, scholars, who... Um, it's not that I don't appreciate the academic world. I myself spent quite a few years um, as an academic. And the problem is that when it comes to Kabbalah, you can't just intellectualize this wisdom and understand it through the intellect. You can't do that without practicing the wisdom of Kabbalah. That's how you come to actually understand it from your own vessels, from your own experience. So today we're going to discuss how to develop your tense field from a practitioner's point of view based on the authentic sources of the wisdom of Kabbalah. My name is Joseph and I'm a senior instructor at CubU, which is the online learning center for sharing the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah and the science of connection that originates from it. How to develop your tense filot coming up. Okay, so uh, we're going to go and uh, dive right into it. Uh, just uh, uh, it's always great when you guys uh, say where you're watching from gives a sense of all of the different people with uh, unique desires that are connected from all around the world so please go ahead and tell us uh, where you're watching from write it in the chat or in the comments uh, also if you have questions as we go through the material then just go ahead and put them on the chat as long as they're relevant to the topic and uh, I will do my best to get to uh, as many questions as possible. If I'm looking this way, uh, it probably means that I'm looking at the, the chat here uh, and fishing for your questions. So, um, yeah, okay, I already see that uh, friends are connecting from uh, a bunch of different places. Great. Okay, so, um, the ten Sfirot. What are they? What are the ten sefirot? When we say that, uh, or when we look at this, you know, diagram here, this is just a diagram. It's not the ten sefirot are not any kind of physical object. What are they? So, when we're talking about the ten sefirot, we are talking about the structure of the spiritual vessel through which we perceive the spiritual reality. What does that mean? Let's let's try to make it really, really clear. Um, just like in our world, in our physical experience, we have a body and it has uh, five senses. And through these five senses and through our, our body, we perceive this whole earthly experience, this material life, this physical life that we are in. So in a similar way, we can develop a non-material device or senses that can perceive the non-material existence. So the structure of such a device, Kabbalists found, 
is made up of 10 Sfirot. We still need to understand what they are, but just to give it a clear title, we're talking about the structure of our spiritual vessel. You can call it the structure of the soul, you can call it the structure of the spiritual sense or the spiritual senses. That's what it is. It's non-material. It has nothing to do with any object or uh, physical being. So we need to understand what it's about in order to get to how to develop one, right? So here's another concept. In spirituality, in the spiritual perception of reality, there's no separation between us and what we perceive. There is a clarity that all of reality is one thing. It's, it's one entity. And so when we talk about the structure of the spiritual vessel being ten sfirot, or when we talk about the structure of the spiritual reality itself, we're talking about one and the same thing. This is kind of different to, to get used to because in our world, we're used to a very um, kind of different experience, right? In our physical experience of the world, there is us, uh, let's say this, this body, this flesh and blood body, uh, all our consciousness is glued to this bodily experience that we have, and we feel that this body is separate from the environment, from the, our surrounding. There is us, and there is the world. There is us, and there is reality. There is us and all the other 8 billion human beings. But in the spiritual reality, um, one comes to perceive all of reality as part of oneself. We begin to identify that everything that exists, the, the still level of reality, the vegetative level of reality, the animate level, the human level, and other spiritual uh, qualities that exist, they're all layers of us. They're all uh, different qualities of one existence and we and reality are one and the same thing that's why when we talk about the structure of the tense filot we're talking about the structure of the spiritual vessel but at the same time we can also find kabbalists using the tense filot in their writings to describe the spiritual reality because it is uh, basically synonymous it's just a matter of perspective are we looking from the perspective of the one who attains reality or the perspective of what is attained by the perceiver, by the observer? All right, I hope that was, that was clear enough. If not, uh, definitely go ahead and post questions uh, in the chat and we'll get to them a little later. Um, all right, so what, uh, what is the origin of the Ten Sfirot? What are the Ten Sfirot actually made of what what is it right what are these these things where do they come from how do they come up so we're gonna try to really get into that and un understand that in order to do so we're gonna have to back up a little bit okay we're gonna have to go all the way back to what is the nature of reality in general what is the nature of the whole reality uh according to the wisdom of kabbalah so Let's use this quote from uh, Kabbalist Yehuda Ashlag, Bala Sulam. Um, I'll put it here. There we go. Uh, actually, I'll put myself on the other side here. There we go. All right. So here is what uh, Kabbalist Yehuda Ashlag, the preeminent Kabbalist of the 20th century, uh, this is what he writes about uh, the nature of reality in his article, Preface to the, to the Wisdom of Kabbalah. So, the will to receive is the whole substance of creation, from beginning to end. Thus, all the innumerable, uh, all the creatures, sorry, and all their innumerable instances and conducts that have appeared and will appear are but measures and various values of the will to receive. 
Okay, what have we just read here? This Kabbalist, this great Kabbalist, is telling us that everything we experience in reality and what we don't yet experience, everything that exists is actually made up of one substance. Now, this is not a physical substance that we're talking about. This is a non-material substance. I understand that sounds, that takes a little getting used to, but before there is actually a material reality, there is a deeper level of information and qualities, non-material attributes that make up the structure of our world. And Bala Sulam tells us here that all they are are levels and various frequencies of desire. Desire is the only thing. Desire, desire to receive, will to receive, same thing. Desire is the only thing that was created. It's the only matter of creation, if you will. Let's let's just make it absolutely clear here with uh, with a drawing, a little drawing, perhaps. Make it really make it really obvious what we're talking about, right? So we are saying that actually check out these these emojis. Okay, that's not the one I wanted. So um, we're saying that everything that exists on the still level, the vegetative level, the animate level, the human level, right? So there's all kinds of stars like the sun, uh, like, you know, planets, galaxies, everything that exists in the universe on the still level. Then there's biological life, right? So this tree uh, symbolizes that. There is the animate level of existence. Uh, actually, let's put them in this in this kind of order. There's a still level, the vegetative level, the animate level, and the human level. Now, all of these, and let's actually even write it down here. So, the still, vegetative, animate. Let me just expand this a little bit. There we go. And human, all of these are actually, all of these are actually levels of desire. Not just that, if you are able to identify, to perceive other spiritual uh, beings or entities or degrees, let's write, they too, all of this reality, everything that can possibly exist is in this one giant uh, structure or made up of the same kind of material that we call desire. So when we look at a rock, when we look at a plant, when we look at an animal, when we look at another person, when we identify emotions within us, uh, feelings that we have, even when we attain the spiritual layers of reality, we're always um, experiencing we're always experiencing desire. This is really the one thing that exists. Okay, now that I'm convinced this is um, uh, quite clear, um, we can move forward and see how does that have to do with the 10 Sfirot, right? Because that's why we went into this tangent on the nature of reality according to Kabbalah. We want to understand how that has to do with the 10 Sfirot, what the 10 Sfirot are made of what are they where do they come from right so all of reality is desire now take a look at um, at this drawing here this diagram represents how the desire was created so the matter of creation the substance of everything that exists is desire we're looking at a diagram that represents how the desire was created. Kabbalists explain that the desire was created through five stages. Five stages by which a complete vessel was created. 
the very beginning of it, uh, you can see here I'm pointing with my, uh, my mouse cursor, the very beginning of it is called the root phase. The root phase um, is the initial creation of the desire to receive that was created, the substance of creation. Now, this whole diagram is fascinating. It talks about uh, the template of creation, nothing less than that. We're not going to go deep into it now. We're going to see how it relates to the 10 Sfilot. Uh, but if you're interested in that, this is called the four phases of direct light. And uh, you can definitely uh, look out, uh, look for some material that we might have on it here on the YouTube channel. And definitely, if you go into Cobb U, uh, you'll definitely encounter uh, a lot of material on that. Fascinating stuff and uh, really um, very important for uh, studying the wisdom of Kabbalah. But we can't get into it now. We want to know how that structure has to do with the tense field. So this structure that created the desire, the, the phases of creation of the desire, are five stages. The root stage, phase one, two, three, and four. And what these diagrams here represent is just different phases of evolution, different shapes that the desire takes on itself until it reaches this level here, the fifth or phase four, um, the fifth stage here where it is a complete vessel, where it is capable of containing um, what, the, what nature wanted it to contain. So, how does that have to do with the Ten Sfilot? Because these stages are the basis, the template of creation, this becomes a process that repeats itself in all of creation. It has what we call uh, the nature of a fractal. Uh, if you're familiar with, um, with the idea of fractals, basically the idea is a structure or a pattern that constantly repeats itself and is self-similar. And so these five stages, um, these five stages are also the basis for the Sfirot, for the ten Sfirot. So this is how it works. The root phase is the basis for the Sfira of Keter, which is the first Sfira. Then phase one of the desire is the basis for the Sfira of Chokhmah. Then phase two, the basis for the Sfira of Bina. Phase three, for Zeranpin. And phase four, for Malchut. So again, five stages, root one, two, three, and four. Five stages by which the desire was created. They become the basis for these 10 Sfirot. But wait a minute. We, we know that there are tense field, right? That structure that the Kabbalists discovered, we refer to it as tense field, and here we only see five. So what's going on here? So this uh, phase here, phase three, that is the basis for the Sfirah of Zeranpin, this is a very unique stage of creation. Um, Again, we can't get into all of the specifics of it because we want to move on to, to how to develop your tense field. But um, uh, it's like a mini model, to be very brief about it, it's like a mini model of the entire process of creation. And therefore, it can be unpacked or unzipped into six other sfirot, which are chesed, gvura, tiferet, netzach. Hod Yesod. So, when you look at all of these, these five stages of desire, when you, uh, correspondingly, we see the Sfirot that, that come from them, we actually have here ten Sfirot. Another way to look at it is like this. So, here uh, on the right side, uh, let me move myself for a second. There we go. Here on the right side, you can see ten sfirot, keter, chokhmah, bina, chesed, gvura, tiferet, netzach, hod, yesod, malchut. And here we have keter, chokhmah, bina, that's three. Zeranpin is basically all of these six sfirot, chesed, gvura, tiferet, netzach, hod, yesod. So that's another six. And the last one 
The tenth is Malchut. So this is where the, the ten Sfirot come from. Okay, they come from the very structure of reality. Remember what we said they were? They are uh, the structure of the spiritual vessel through which we perceive reality and through that vessel we identify that they are actually the structure of reality itself because there's no separation between the observer and reality in the spiritual world, in the spiritual experience. Okay, so what is a sfira then? Now we have a good basis to understand that. What's a sfira? What, what is it actually? We already know that uh, a sfira is basically a desire, right? We already understand that it has to be made up of a desire. So what is unique about a sfira that uh, that makes it a sfirah. What happens to the desire that be, it becomes something that Kabbalists refer to as sfirah? So, sfirah comes from the word, from the Hebrew word sapir. Uh, you can translate it to sapphire, uh, but we, we're not talking about the, the gemstone uh, sapphire. Rather, only the quality, the luminous quality of it. That's the meaning of the word sapir, that something shines. So sfira, let me move my head to the other side here, there we go. Sfira means that there is a desire, a layer of desire, a portion, an aspect of desire that went through some process, we call it correction or spiritual correction or or. Uh, equivalence of form, it went through some process that made that desire shine with light. And therefore, it is referred to as sfira from the word sapir, which means luminous. So, these desires that become sfirot, they constitute each and every level and layer of reality. Okay, uh, I, 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 it's going to get a little bit technical uh, now before we can understand how uh, how we can get into it more emotionally. So um, I hope uh, I hope you're uh, bearing with me so far in terms of uh, questions. Uh, let's continue a little bit more, and we'll get to to questions later on. Okay, but if you have them uh, until this point, definitely go ahead and post them. Uh, we have uh, Ruth and Rachel, they're helping me, and they will uh, collect the questions, and hopefully I'll be able to answer as many as possible. So, um, let's let's go back to the drawing board for a second here. Whoops, okay. So, we, we just said that these Sfirot, they exist um, in every level of reality. So remember the five stages of desire, the five stages by which the desire was created. Um, so we, uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's um, let's even draw this desire here. Let's make it like this. Um, let's do it. This will be similar to that diagram that we saw. So this is the all of the desire to receive that was created. Okay, this is the substance of creation. Now, this, this desire that was created is divided, as we heard, into five stages, just, just as it was created. And we can call, we, these stages become the basis for the five sfirot. Five sfirot or ten sfirot, remember, it's the same thing, it's just whether we detail the sfirah of Zeranpin into six or we keep it zipped. So whether you say five sfirot or ten sfirot, we mean the same thing. That's an important, uh, an important detail to remember. Okay, so these five stages of desire, they constitute, they become containers for the five, uh, the five spiritual worlds. The first one is called. Um, there we go. The first one is called. 
Adam Kadmon. Now, that's in Hebrew again. I'm going to maybe show you. There we go. Whoops. Adam Kadmon. I'm going to show you maybe the Hebrew as well. So you can just see how it looks in the in the Hebrew language. Let me just expand this a little bit. There we go. So Adam Kadmon, this is the first level. The second level, the second world that is created corresponding to the second level of desire, right? This is called the world of Atzilut. Again, I'll show you the, whoops, the English and the Hebrew, Atzilut. Then we have the world of Bria. Bria, that's in English and now in Hebrew. There we go. Then we have the world of Yetzira. And last, last one is the world of Asiya. These are all words in Hebrew. I'm not going to go into what, she, what each word means. But what's important is for us is to understand the essence of these words, of these worlds. What are these? What are we talking about here? And we want to know how all of this has to do with the Ten Sfirot, remember? That's why we're getting into this. So let's just put another big line here. This one will be thicker. You'll see why later on. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's make it kind of thicker. Okay, so what are these? These are the spiritual worlds and they are really levels of perception. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about levels of desire that when we experience them, and we can only experience them as ten sfirot, meaning we can only experience them once we have achieved something called the spiritual correction, equivalence of form. Once we go through that process of spiritual attainment, of spiritual development, we discover ten sfirot in each of these of these levels. So, the world of Asiya, and remember, when we say 10 or 5, we mean the same thing, right? Um, this is just a different way of, of, uh, of uh, mentioning the 10 Sfirot. 10 Sfirot, I'll repeat it again, just in case, 10 Sfirot is Keter Chochma Bina Chesed Gvura Tiferet Netzach Hod Yesod Malchut, right? Like we see here. And when we let's go back for a second, there we go. And when we uh, when we say Keta Chochma Bina Zeranpin and Malchut, we are just mentioning five. But we whether we mention five Sfirot or ten Sfirot, we mean the same thing here. So these ten Sfirot exist in every level of reality. So right here. Uh, let me change the color here for a second. Okay, so right here there are ten sfirot, or five, doesn't matter, five stages, doesn't matter, right? Right here, ten sfirot. Right here, again, five sfirot here as well, or ten sfirot. And if we go deeper, let's say, let's go to into the world of Adam Kadmon for a second. Then here as well, here too, um, to make it a little less thick, here too we can find again one, two, three, four, five parts. So again, we have five that five sfirot or ten sfirot, and within within each of them there is another five five, 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 and five. So this can go on. Remember the fractal nature of reality, the fractal nature of the tense field that we mentioned? This is 
where it comes to play. So we can go all the way into infinity. In every sphira, there is another 10 spherot. And in every sphira there, there is another 10 spherot, all the way to infinity. But the Kabbalists say that in order to give a, a, a like a general description of the spiritual ladder in order to provide a general description of the spiritual reality they give us three levels three levels of this uh, description so this is the first level we called it worlds adam kadmon atzilut bria yetzira asia then the second level uh, meaning the sfirot that make up the worlds, the five sfirot that make up the worlds, so these, okay, these are called five partsufim. That's another word in Hebrew. You don't need to worry about it too much, but I'll, I'll write it here, just uh, in case you're interested. These are called partsufim, and they too are made up, right? Five partsufim make up the world of Adam Kadmon. Five partsufim make up the world of Atzilut, Bria, Yetzira, Asiya, and, and so on. And each partsuf is made up of five individual sfirot. Okay? So this is the level that we refer to as sfira. Um, there we go. One second. I'll... I'll add it here in text just to make it clearer. There we go. Okay. So this is five sfirot. Five, ten, same thing. Okay. What does that give us? This gives us all together, this gives us 125 spiritual degrees. Um, let's use this, or this actually, yeah. This means that all of the spiritual ladder goes from 0 to 125. You can't really see this now, right? I'll, there we go. So 125 degrees exist in the spiritual ladder. All of them are made up of sfirot, okay? What did we have so far? Quick recap. The nature of reality is desire. Desire is the substance of creation. The ten sfirot are, um, they are made up of desires that went through a process called correction or equivalence of form and they achieved light within them. And so because they shine, they are called sfirot from the word sapphire. Sapir in Hebrew, which means shines, luminous. So all of the spiritual reality are degrees above degrees of those ten sfirot. In order to perceive the spiritual reality, we need to learn how to find that desire from which we can begin to develop this vessel, this spiritual container, this spiritual non-material uh, sense called ten sfirot. How do we do that? Okay, so back to the drawing for a second. Um, all right. Yes, can you see this? Yes, you can. Okay, so just to, um, let's kind of complete this, this drawing here, make it, make it really clear. There we go. Let's move this guy here. So all of these, all the desires that we're talking about here, they're all spiritual, spiritual desires. They're all spiritual desires. Okay. So where where is our world then? What do we experience uh, in this reality? Where is this reality? So here's the thing. This will now give us a concept of where we actually are right now. And then we'll understand how we can rise here, understand where the spiritual, how to rise up to the spiritual world. 
So if everything that exists is only the desire, all of these spiritual levels of perception, these spiritual worlds, Adam Kadmon Atzilut Bria Yetzir Asiyah, that we've just mentioned, they're all, um, they're all here. They are the desires that were created. And I just titled them spiritual desires. They're all fulfilling this, almost the entire, almost the entire uh, vessel that was created. So where is us? In what desire do we experience this physical reality? It has to be a desire, right? Because there is no, uh, there's no other vessel to perceive reality. There's no other matter of creation, as we've learned. So our experience comes from just a tiny sliver. It's not even, it doesn't even do, this is too big here. <laughs> it doesn't do justice to, to the proportion that I'm trying to, uh, to communicate here. Let's make it, let's make it thinner. Um, there we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you get the idea. There is just a sliver of desire that um, a sliver of, of, of a, a tiny layer where we live our entire bodily existence. And this whole, uh, everything that we experience is actually below this spiritual ladder. So our world is here um let's continue this this line for a second there we go our world is here what do we have in our world remember these guys the still vegetative animate and human uh okay that's not the one i wanted <laughs> okay so okay so in this world again we have still vegetative animate, let's take a B this time, and human. So this is the kind of reality that we are familiar with in our world, right? This is the still vegetative, animate, uh, and human, right? Still vegetative, animate, human. Let's just fix the order here. Okay, so this is the experience we call this world. In Hebrew, haolam hazeh. And all of it, everything that we experience here, let me just make this a little smaller. There we go. There we go. Everything that we experience here in this world, here, comes from uh, our corporeal desire. So our corporeal desire is tiny with respect to the spiritual reality with respect to the spiritual desires it's just a very tiny layer of reality this thing right okay so in this world as well where are the tens filot you might ask we just said that they exist in every layer of reality didn't we we said that adam kadmon is made up of Parzufim, made up of Sfirot, Atzilut, the same, Bria, the same, Yetzirah, the same, Asiya, the same. What about this world? What is this? So, while we think that we live in a physical existence, this is just the way in which we experience this level, this tiny slice of desire that we, ex we can experience. This tiny layer of desire that we live in gives us a physical existence, um, a physical perception of existence through our five senses, right? Let's remember our five senses for a second, and then we'll see how it all comes together. We have the sense of touch, sense of sight, sense of um, a smell, let me just put it in the in, in a certain order here. Let's start from actually sound. Yes, and then sense of sight, sound, smell, and taste. Okay, 
Let me just zoom in a little bit. So these are the five, the five senses through which we perceive the physical reality. Remember we said there are five senses or five levels in every layer of reality. The five senses that we are familiar with here in our, um, in our physical existence, they actually correspond to the same ten sfirot. Keter, Chochma, Bina, Zeranpin. Remember, Zeranpin always includes six if we detail it. And Malchut. So, what we have in this world are five senses that are actually just the way in which we currently perceive our tense field. Meaning, it's not that our senses perceive anything spiritual. God forbid, don't get confused with that. The tense field are, um, are spiritual. They are the spiritual parts of reality. But the five senses that we have right now, they come from five levels of desire that even our corporeal layer of desire that we are made of, that we can experience, is divided to. Reality is always divided into this structure of five or ten sfirot, same thing, five levels of desire or ten sfirot. And so, that's how we perceive our reality, even here, right now, in this world. Um, are you guys experiencing some buffering in the broadcast? Uh, or everything is okay? What? Let's just do a quick pause here, just to make sure that everyone can uh, hear me well and see me well. Just give me a like a little thumbs up here. Um, just tell me you can see well, hear well. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, there are some, some issues. I hope this will be solved. Uh, this will be solved soon. Okay, so where do you then... Um, start when you want to develop your 10 sfirot. Where does it start? So, um, we already know it's about desire, right? We already know this is what it's actually about. The sfirot have to do with our desires, but what kind of desire? So the question, the specific question that we need to ask for, to ask here is, how do we uh, find the right desire that we start from? The kind of desire from which we uh, begin to develop our tense field. So, there's a unique desire that exists within each and every one of us, each and every one of you, if you are a human being. That's the only condition. If you are a human being, Kabbalists explain, you have this desire. Um, they refer to it as the metaphorically as the point in the heart. So in Kabbalah, the heart represents all the kinds of desires that we have to get all kinds of fulfillment in this world, right? Desires for uh, uh, sex and food and family uh, and shelter. And then we have the more social desires for money and honor, possession, fame, power. We also have desire for knowledge, which is to understand how reality works. But then there's another kind of desire that exists in every human being. The question is whether we are conscious of it or not. And that desire that the Kabbalists call the point in the heart is a desire that asks about the meaning and purpose of life. We all have that. The, uh, the simple proof of that is that typically if you take a child five or six or seven years old, 
you'll see that they they ask mommy daddy what's going on where am i who am i what am i what is this world what is this reality where is everything going is there a purpose in life am i real is this real where is everything going what's the goal of life what's the meaning and purpose of it all and typically when we're kids you know the the the, the answers are not satisfactory to say the least but the desire is there and some people maybe most of them until until a certain uh, phase in human development most people just put this this these questions these existential questions to sleep kabbalists say these are not some philosophical questions they are the beginning of your spiritual experience of your spiritual vessel the device that will unfold from a tiny point in your heart to a structure of ten sfirot through which you will perceive the spiritual reality so if you put that question to sleep and you just go okay i'll uh, you know yeah i have these questions about life about meaning about purpose but you know it is what it is and i'll i have to go to work and i have to do all kinds of things and i can't really you know dedicate the focus and energy and time to to delve into it if that's what you do then uh kabbalist bala sulam calls this flowing and drowning in the currents of life but if you have a strong desire to attain the meaning and purpose of life not just to intellectualize it get a certain uh, uh um you know uh, scientific understanding of how reality is built but to go to the why why do we live what is my purpose in life if you have a need a burning relentless need to attain that to find the answer to that then your point in the heart is on it's turned on and what that means is that all you need to do is focus on it and begin to develop it and the point in the heart is not a point it's actually more like um dna it contains within it all of the information except that it's zipped it is packed and what you need to learn to do is to unpack it to allow it to open up to unfold and what will happen is that from a little point it will become a complete structure of tense field how does that happen um i really hope that you guys can uh, hear me well see me well i um i hope so uh i'll continue and w- in the hope that uh, that you can um hear well even if uh, maybe the visual is buffering a little bit so how do we develop the point in the heart into tense field i'm going to do a, a just a quick a quick um, explanation of this so i can still take a few questions because we don't have much time left um, we might have to do a second part to this session now that i'm thinking about it so okay so here is how it works the let's go back to the drawing board for a second so okay so the point in the heart begins from this tiny point see just a tiny little point that's all it is but when you begin to develop it and kabbalah is basically the gym and the roadmap to expand your point in the heart kabbalah teaches you how to flex that muscle how to find it put your finger on it so to speak put your attention to it and begin to work with it begin to to uh, to flex it like a muscle and to put it in the right environment where it can flourish like a flower but all the information is already there your soul is contained uh, in its embryonic state of development inside this little point here and what happens when you begin to develop it is that um, actually let me just use a line here there we go what happens when you begin to develop it is that yeah is that it develops in two 
opposite directions on the one hand on the one hand you begin to discover through that point in the heart that the spiritual reality is something magnificent it's it's a great uh, experience that you long for and with the 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 practice the kabbalistic practice that that um, that you get you can begin to somewhat have a clue of what the spiritual fulfillment is you can begin to sort of sort of um uh smell it or or you you begin to to uh, build your senses for it and you find how great it is you find the greatness of the spiritual goal it becomes really important to you it becomes really meaningful to you it becomes something that you work with in life something that you actually uh, feel and you you're becoming more and more conscious of and you begin to identify that the quality of this spiritual reality is one of oneness, love, bestowal, unbounded connection, complete unconditional bestowal that binds all parts of reality. On the other hand, you also discover at the same time that your own nature is very much opposite to this spiritual reality that you're as if uh, your point in the heart is held captive uh, or is sort of confined by the, the, the this egoistic desire that you live in this very basic corporeal desire in which the point in the heart is still uh, as if drowned uh, or submerged in that corporeal desire and so with these two opposites that's how the point in the heart begins to grow fast forward what happens is this that ultimately what you're discovering is the greatness of the spiritual reality the greatness of the quality of bestowal the greatness of this 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 point in the heart that is developing and the spiritual reality it is making you aspire to and long for and this is called your point of Ketel and on the other hand you also discover this nature that you're in that doesn't allow you to to uh, to just uh, be completely immersed in the spiritual reality it's as if holding you back it is showing you that you are made of an opposite material and so what happens is that when there is sufficient tension that is building up here at first it's small and then it's bigger and then it's bigger until it reaches a certain kind of threshold where where the the gap uh, we can call it the uh, the Delta right Delta usually the difference the Delta the gap between Keta and Malchut becomes so great that you have a true need within you that has been brewed that has been built up within you to to make these opposites come together to make these opposites connect and when you have that sufficient need you become sensitive to what we call in Kabbalah the light that reforms this natural evolutionary pressure that exists in reality that is pushing all of us towards our spiritual progress our spiritual goal when you become when you build this tension between these two polar opposites within you then you attract that influence that surrounding light and it makes the connection between your plus and minus your point of Keter your point of Malchut and that builds for the first time your tense field we have to uh, uh, move to a few questions 
Uh, we got a few minutes for that, uh, and then we'll have to we'll have to conclude. I realize there's a, a lot more that we should get into here, and we just really got into the uh, the uh, the meat of it now. There's a lot more to to discuss here. Uh, I will mention that in a few minutes after we finish this session, I will be uh, live on Zoom with the CobU students. So if you're a CobU student, you should see a, a link to 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 the Zoom session in your email, and uh, we'll be there after right after this session. So. Uh, Let's see if we have a few questions that we can answer quickly. Um, Heidi from Heidi Telifer, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, you're asking, is this correction with strive for uh, uh, like an, an antithesis, I believe, to so much of what is required to survive in life, practically speaking? Okay, what is the correction? What is the spiritual correction that we're talking about? No, it has nothing to do with um, um, harming your your need to survive in this world in any way. In fact, all of those corporeal desires that we have here in this world, they're not a problem at all with regards to the spiritual reality. They are a layer of desire that doesn't need correction. In order to experience anything more than that, anything beyond this world, anything that is eternal, that belongs to the eternal reality, we have to have a desire that is corrected. What is this correction? I mentioned it before, I called it uh, equivalence of form as well. It's a correction of intention. The, um, the, um, the addition, the installment of a new direction of usage for the desire. We find a new way to direct our desires so that they work in order to bestow upon the whole of reality. When we achieve that correction of intention, we can use all those desires level after level after level, and that's how we discover the spiritual world. We climb up the 125 spiritual degrees that we mentioned earlier. Okay, um, here's uh, another question. Um, Maria is asking, how do we unpack the, unpack the point in the heart? Please do part two. Well, how is the process we started discussing in the last few minutes? And you're right, uh, there's a lot more to get into here. Uh, we'll try to do part two. Okay, uh, challenge uh, accepted. Um, David Mancini wants to know, I heard Kabbalah means reception. Does that mean we are receiving uh, the reforming light? Kabbalah means reception. Literally, that's the meaning of of the word um, and it refers to the wisdom of how to receive the wisdom of reception the wisdom of Kabbalah receive what all of reality everything that exists that was meant to fulfill the will to receive that's what the wisdom of reception is about does that include receiving the reforming light yes sure you can include that as well uh, Okay, we're really out of time. I'm really sorry that we didn't have more time for, for questions. Um, if you're a CUBU student, then uh, of course I'll see you soon in the in the Zoom session. Uh, I'll answer I'll answer one last um, um, one last question for today. Uh, this one is from Lisa, and she's asking about the 125 steps. Uh, is it step by step? Uh, can we climb or rise more than one and how? Okay. <laughs> um, we, uh, hey, Lisa, we, um, the spiritual degrees, we can't skip any of them. You can't, they're like the evolution. Think about the evolution of a human being in this world. You can't jump from being five to being 20, not just biologically, but mentally, consciously. You're a different creature when you evolve, right? You, uh, you understand the world differently. You perceive reality differently. You make new connections from all of the components of reality that appear to you. You become a different person when you grow up. Similarly, the spiritual vessel, the ten sefirot, they each time grow in quality. It's each time it's a completely new ten sefirot. Same structure, but deeper, more profound, 
more uh, uh, greater in its in its scope, in its consciousness, in what it can hold within it. So every next level is that kind of evolution, and that's why uh, we can't skip any levels. We have to go uh, one by one. But there's no time in spirituality. That's a whole topic in and of itself. But um, you can go through, uh, uh, you know, a hundred states, spiritual states in, in an hour or uh, five spiritual states in a year. It depends on the person's free choice and conscious spiritual efforts. Okay, with this, we really have to conclude. I am sorry if you're having, if you're experiencing some uh, buffering in this broadcast. This is uh, um, a bummer. If this is happening, hopefully we'll fix it for next time. I hope that you at least were able to hear everything well. I do want to say one last thing. Um, if you are new here or if you've been around, you know, uh, this material and this channel for a while and you're interested in really doing this thing, if you identify with this desire that we call the point in the heart, if you want to actually realize that there is a step-by-step -step method and uh, um, a, an amazing environment that enables you to actually do this like you would go to the gym or uh, and get a roadmap for you know uh, where you need to go this is what the authentic Kabbalah is all about this is what it's for in Kabyu our online learning center for the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah that's what we do. We provide you with this step-by-step -step guidance and the environment that you need in order to plant your point in the heart in the right soil so that it can get all the guidance and the nutrients that you need so that it can flourish like a flower, so that it can grow and open up and you can start elevating up the spiritual ladder. I really hope that you take this opportunity um, Rachel, if you can, please post a link directly to uh, our Kabbalah Revealed course. There's an opportunity now. You can take this course. It's free. You can access this Kabbalah Revealed uh, uh, course for free. I truly recommend it if you didn't try it. Tony Kosinek there, one of our senior instructors, uh, really does a great job of taking you step by step from identifying the point in the heart all the way to seeing how you actually develop it and what you need in order to do that. So if you identified with what we talked about today, definitely go ahead uh, and click that link. Rachel, uh, if you can please post it. Uh, that's it for today. 